welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, Albina is here from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum with an update about what's happening there. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, we have overcast skies. It's 62 degrees right now with rain on the way. This afternoon, some showers around, temperatures in the upper 60s. A steadier rain develops this evening with lows in the upper 50s and that just continues through most of the day tomorrow with rain and showers maybe even a pop-up thunderstorm tomorrow highs in the lower 60s a little better on sunday the wind will pick up it'll be brisk but still a chance of an afternoon shower sunday's highs only in the upper 50s and of course it'll be okay on monday with sun and cloud size monday in the upper 50s may have our first frost of the season coming up on Monday night. But for now, it's just cloudy and 62 degrees in Quincy. Checking out news for you today, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center will be opening up a new medical complex right in Quincy Center. Fox Rock Properties of Quincy will build that new five-story, 110,000 square foot facility at the former Ross Parking Garage location. And Beth Israel will be the tenants. Officials gathered at the site earlier this week. Mayor Thomas Koch says the new facility will meet a growing need for more medical facilities in Quincy. I'm out and about. People still talk about the lack of a hospital and uh, you know, I try to give them the history about you know the city had a hospital for a long time and went out of that business in 99 after losing money every year and the nonprofit had it for a number of years until they went bankrupt and Stuart bought them out for a profit and, and, uh, and on and on it went and it's just not the amount of um, uh, use, I guess, mm. say. Most people opted to go in town for, for any major type surgeries, which is where hospitals really make their money. So um, so I think this is going to be a tremendous asset, filling a need for a lot of medical services that right now you cannot get in Quincy. So it's exciting. Mayor says Beth Israel will likely close their urgent care center on the nearby Hannon Parkway and merge that clinic with the new facility. The new center will offer primary care, urgent care, cardiology, OBGYN, cancer care, orthopedics, and a full suite of diagnostic radiology services plus a retail pharmacy. Construction is expected to begin in 2025 with the center opening to patients in 2027. Also earlier this month, Atlantic Development of Hingham unveiled plans for a 300 unit apartment complex along with a specialty grocer and a restaurant and a bank at the nearby sites of the IHOP restaurants and a Health Express clinic. Well, a new four-story, 30-unit condo complex has been approved for South Quincy. Zoning Board and the Planning Board have approved the plans by Galvin Development to demolish this existing medical office building on Totman Street and replace it with a new condo development. The new building will have a 24-space parking garage underneath and 20 surface level parking spaces, along with a bicycle storage area. Part of the agreement requires Galvin to build a sidewalk connecting the new building with Center Street to allow pedestrians to get to the nearby Quincy Adams T Station. Galvin will also pay the city $70,000 to install a new water main on Topman Street. The city will repave the streets. The project expected to take about 18 months to complete. The Quincy City Council wants the city's traffic engineer to come up with ways to stop commuters from cutting through local neighborhoods along Quincy Shore Drive. City Council President Noel DeBona says that a resolution will be presented at the next council meeting. The cut-throughs on Walston Beach in Ward 6, there's a whole bunch of streets that have a lot of cut-throughs, the, the north and south um, Payne streets, um, you know, uh, Bayfield streets. You know, the Arnold's, uh, you know, Channing's, all these streets are cut throughs. And we want to just make sure that uh, he wanted to make sure that the traffic engineer took a good look, hard look at these cut throughs. And if there's anything that he can, that, that the traffic engineer can do moving forward for those residents in those particular areas. It has been something over the years that I have actually got some complaints about from, from, from residents as well. Formally, really, because... 
as we grow as a city, um, some of the, the, the reconstruction, some of the revitalization of some houses have pushed some folks onto the, to, to the street. So the, the street park. And so it, I think it'll be good. It'll go into the public safety um, committee. But right now it'll actually get like, you know, like, like a number, like, a, you know, and, and be on the agenda for the next meeting, which will be November 13th. Quincy Police Sergeant Patrick Verity says there are now dedicated traffic enforcement patrols on duty during both day and night shifts. Chief Mark Kennedy bolstering the police department's traffic division by adding two additional officers to enforce traffic rules. Verity says those new traffic officers are assigned to trouble spots, including right now the area of Copeland and Cross Streets in West Quincy. Well, the new Rick de Cristofaro Early Learning Center in Quincy officially opens this coming Sunday. A ribbon cutting ceremony and an open house will be held this Sunday at one o'clock to mark the completion of the $45 million project. The new center features 30 classrooms on three floors to provide specialized education for up to 350 students in grades K through eight who have learning disabilities and autism. The city purchased that building on Old Colony Avenue behind Central Middle School from Eastern Nazarene College and converted it into that new center. Mayor Thomas Koch says the new center will save the city millions of dollars over time by not having to pay to transport special needs students out of the city for their education. The first students will begin taking classes there early next year and then enrollment will continue on a rolling basis. Well, coffee with a cop is back in Quincy. Quincy Police Department is restarting their community outreach program after pausing it due to the pandemic. Community policing officers will be meeting with the public at various coffee shops and restaurants and other public places on a regular basis. The first post-pandemic coffee with a cop was held yesterday at McKay's restaurant on Franklin Street. Community police officer Steve Cleary and Ward 2 City Councilor Anthony Andronico spent two hours meeting and greeting the public. The city's new diversity, equity and inclusion liaison Damian Utar also attended. Coffee with a Cop meetings will be held in every ward throughout Quincy on a monthly basis. That is our check of news for you today. Coming up, we chat with Al Bina from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum. That's next. Welcome back. Tomorrow is International and Quincy Archaeology Day. And here in Quincy, the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum hopes to be celebrating that with a, a big open house. Uh, President Albina has stopped on by to tell us what's happening and what will be happening in the future. Good to see you again, Al. Yeah, great to be here, Joe. Like I say, it's great to be here all at we really enjoy coming on with you. Yeah, it's really a pleasure to be able to feature the uh, the museum. You really took it from just an idea, you know, just a thought uh, years ago to now a full-fledged, functioning, operating, physical museum. Yeah, yeah like I say, we're well, just trying to say some of this granite history uh, in the city of Quincy here. It was such a large, um, it was one of the major employers in the city of Quincy back at the turn of the century. Right. Uh, and waves of immigrants came in, and it was very interesting to to develop the history of that here in the city of Quincy. It certainly know. left an indelible mark on the city's uh, past, uh, but also yeah. on the present, because many of the ancestors of those original granite workers are still here, yourself being one of them. Right, yeah. 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 Again, the reason why I got interested in it is my grandfather, both grandpa both grandparents were in the granite yes. industry. And I said, well, I said, let's try to start save some of this history. So here we are. Here we are. How many years later now? When did, you, uh, when did this first about, come to thought? Uh, eight years now. Okay. Eight, nine years, you know, since we originally started, you know. Are you, are you pleased with the progress that you've made in the museum oh, so yes. far? Oh, yes. Yes. Very okay. pleased. You know, we have the Historic Alliance Journey Mill, which now we're at the Historic Alliance Journey Mill with a little museum. Yes. Uh, and again, uh, having a historic building like that left in the city of Quincy is, is an appropriate place to you know, start a uh, quarry museum, right. basically, you know. Yeah. Uh, for folks who don't know, uh, we're talking about the basically the end of Rashuti Drive, right? Uh, so yep. You just drive up that hill until you can't go any further, and it'll be there on your left. Right up in the quarry area, yep. you know, uh, right up Rashuti Drive, right to the end of Rashuti Drive. You take a right, and we're 100 yards down on the left. Yeah, can't miss it. Can't miss it. 
they don't. It does look like um, like an ancient Greek ruin, though, if you know when you first drive by it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They used to call it the um, Cathedral in the Woods Interesting. back then. You know, the old timers and the people, the hikers that used to go by there before before we ended up there. You right. Know? So and I know that kind of the latest uh, development, if you will, is you, you wanted to stay under city jurisdiction. Is that right? You didn't want to be under the court right, rules, yeah. uh, <coughs> we, jurisdiction. Uh, the 99-year lease yes, that, right, that they yep. proposed, uh, I approached Mayor Koch and I said, you know, there's only two areas in the city of Quincy that's really uh, left about the granted industry. Yep. It's the Incline Plain Railway, which is city property now, yep. and the Lions Trending Mill. I said, how about taking that portion the Lions Turning Mill out of the new lease, that 99 lease with Quarry Hills, mm -hmm. and put it under the Department of Natural Resources. Yes. And he agreed to do that. Okay. You know. Okay. Unfortunately, now the lease has been, um, the, the 99 year lease is, yep. is off for a while, but right. I'm sure it's going to be, be coming back. Sure. So hopefully we'll still be able to come under the Department of Natural Resources so it'll be protected forever. Oh, so is that why you think it's important? Just so that sure. the department yeah. keeps it yeah. as is? And, yeah. yeah. Does, does the city help you up with that with the facility now? Uh, the city doesn't give us that much support right now, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, the mayor is, I mean, he's supportive of us, but we don't get any financial support, okay. basically, okay. from the city. Yeah, you've done this we're, as a grassroots effort. You right, know, you right. really have. We're all member-driven, really, and yeah. donations. We keep it going that way. Yeah, how many members now, would you say? We have about 160 wow. members right now. Okay. Again, in you know, any organization, you only have a key number of people that are really, you know, uh, extremely real, active. Extremely right? active. Yeah. You know what I mean, but these are, these are the rest of the members are people that had uh, ancestors that worked in the Grand Administration. Sure. Their grandfather, their great grandfather, you know, and they, they want to preserve this history. Yeah. Know? So I can say we're uh, thankful of we have that membership, you know, that really keeps us going. Yeah, but you know? I mean, many more people have certainly contributed um, either artifacts or monetary donations. Oh right? yeah, to, yeah. To like say, we, do, we do get donations. We do try to go out and look for grants, but um, yeah. grant writing today is a profession. I mean, yes. You got to really be a professional to really write these grants. You got to be a Philadelphia lawyer, it seems like, is to fill right? out some yeah. of these grants. You know, <laughs> so we're really looking around for somebody that can search out these larger grants so so we can move forward and maybe build a bigger building, you know? Yeah, I know that's your hope in the to future. To house our artifacts, yeah. you know what I mean? Because we have many artifacts that are on storage uh, throughout areas of Quincy, I you see. know? And if we had a larger building, we could bring those artifacts forward and Showcase so people them. be able to view them, you know? Yeah. Again, grant writing is a professional. We're really looking for somebody that can really help us chase some of these bigger grants. Okay, so know. really um, any donations would help you to, to hire that grant writer, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the next goal. That's the next goal. I yes. have every faith you'll get it done now. <laughs> <laughs> Judging on what you've done so far, I'm, I'm sure the, the future is bright for sure. Yeah. As I mentioned, tomorrow is uh, Archaeology Day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, what's that? Well, it's International Archaeology Day here. So uh, around the world? Around the world. Okay. You know, Massachusetts used to jump into it. The, um, Mass historical used to jump into it. They haven't seemed they haven't seemed to be involved in the last couple of years sure. since COVID hit. Oh, I see. Okay. So we figured this year here, let's call it um, Quincy Archaeology. There you go. You know, so we're going to open up the Lions Journey Mill and the museum. Okay. Uh, on the um, 28th, which is uh, not the 28th. Uh, 21st. Is, 21st. It'll be tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow. Yeah. Pending. Pending the rain the with, yes. a, with a rain date of the 28th. Okay. You know. Okay. And then we'll have the museum open and the line of churning mill. We have many artifacts that are located around the mill. We all have interpretive information that's located at each stop around the mill. Yes. Explaining how the equipment was used or you know, where you're standing, what was accomplished at that spot back in the history of the granite industry. Yeah, this is a real living museum. This is not a replica. This is where it happened. Right, yeah. right, yeah. And it, you know, we've kind of made it li made it like a walking uh, walking museum, you know, where you actually walk around the grounds, and you view the artifacts, and you you interpret all the interpretive information that mm -hmm. we have placed in placards around the uh, around the mill. Sure, you know? sure. Um, if it does rain and you have to postpone, how well do you get that information out to folks? Well, again, we'll we'll it, it, we we in our. In our posting, we did post that the rain date would be the 28th, okay. so hopefully. And we'll, we'll catch QA TV to see if they can put it on their 
bulletin board. We'd be happy to do that, yeah. of course. Right. Um, you will be there regardless tomorrow, right, just in case? I'll probably be there regardless, okay. just in case if somebody wants to just come up and just view the museum. But okay. walking around the Lions Training Mill, if it's raining, it, it wouldn't be... You know, it wouldn't be any good walking around in the rain. Not so pleasant. Not so pleasant. So, yeah. Although you might have it all to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get an exclusive tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as always, you uh, brought some pictures. Yes. Yes. Yep. We got a few pictures. Show to show and you. tell the latest yeah. uh, and greatest. Uh, let's take a look at. I guess there's a new building there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, to the to the uh, to the right there. That's the or our original little museum. Yep. We have all staffed and all the artifacts. But we just built this new little museum to the right. With the Quincy Quarry sign, uh, West Quincy sign. Okay. On it. In fact, that uh, that original sign, that's the original sign that was on the West Quincy Depot. Oh. Uh, Where was Down that at the at? corner of Copeland and um, Willard Street. Oh, really? Okay. With the city to Curry Hardware, right at sure. that area. Yeah. And that's where the uh, old Colony Railroad would have been. The Quincy Quarry Railroad would have been tied into the old Colony Railroad, then shipped granite out throughout the country. Oh, I see. So okay. that's the actual sign from the actual. Uh, West Quincy stop the, of the, the Granite from Railway. From the depot building. Yeah. Neat. Where'd yeah. you get that sign? Uh, that, that sign came actually, Tom Bonomi, oh. who was, uh, I, call him, I call Tom my historian. Yeah. Um, he acquired that <clears throat> when he was working with Dave Hodgkins years ago, oh. who again was trying to start a museum and yes. unfortunately never really materialized. But they did save some of this historical equipment. Okay. You know, and it was stored in trailers and uh, we, we, we received all of this after... Dave Hodgkins has passed away. We received all okay. his artifacts, basically. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now you have a place yes. to put it. Yeah. So, did you? Did, was the building constructed at that site, or was it brought in from somewhere else? This, this, the building, this building is there now. No, yeah. it, was, it was contracted right on site. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a Reed's Ferry Shed. Oh, okay. Reed's, hey, you know, every party heard about Reed's Ferry. Whatever shed. works. They do a great job. I got to <laughs> give them a plug. Like okay. I said, they've been great for us, and they came up and put it up, and it was amazing. In one day, bingo, it was up. And it was re it's, it's a really good little solid building. Nice. So, so what, we, what we plan to do with that building, yeah, we just plan to do presentations in oh, there. Oh, all right. Okay. We can put about 16 to 18 chairs in there with, uh, you know, with a screen in there and with projectors. Okay. And we can have many, many, many presentations during the day. I see. Know, okay. And at night, too. But we figured a lot of the, um, I like to do a lot of little presentations during the day mm -hmm. because many of the seniors who are really interested in history, you know, many of them don't drive at night, you mm -hmm. know, they only drive during the daytime. So okay. that's why we're planning to do a lot of little mini presentations during the day in the building. Okay, very good. Yeah. Good idea. We won't be stocking it with artifacts. It's mainly for presentations. We ha we'll have some pictures, sure. you know, on the wall. Too. Yeah, 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 but mostly for a meeting space yeah. and presentations. meeting space okay. and presentations. Very good. So you're already growing. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> One at a time, right? Yeah. As I say in the granite business, Joe, we're chipping away at it, but don't take it for granted. <laughs> Thank goodness yeah. we got that I in got there that in. at least <laughs> once. Let's take a look at the next picture. Yeah. Well, this is another artifact that we we acquired, we, we, we acquired from, the, uh, from Dave Hodgkins. Uh, again, fortunately, he saved a lot of these artifacts back then. This is actually a site uh, where the actual ball turning lathe in the lion turning mill was located. And mm -hmm. You can see the actual stud locations of the little orange things. Oh. And fortunately, in his trailer, he had one of these balls. What they do is when they're going to do a, a round sind a, a, a ball, they'd have the rough cut it by hand first, yep. and he had saved one of these rough cut balls to have it. So it was great to have one okay. of these rough cut balls now actually in the site of actually where the actual finished turning would have been. Yes, you know? I see. And we got the interpretive information that goes along with it. Okay, you know? all right, very good. Check the next one. Again, <clears throat> this is just shot of the uh, the interior of the turning mill. What we've done, we've done a lot of cleaning up. And what, when we've done some cleaning up, we can't really do any digging there because it's on it's a historical site. I it's see. on the National Register, the State Register. So we can't do it because we're not archaeologists. Okay. But when we just clean the surface, just a raking portion of it, all of these studs of the different machines, if you, as you can see here, have actually kind of popped up. Oh. When we've done just a raking of, of the 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 heavy grass yes. and the heavy overgrowth, you okay. know? Okay, all right. So, so what we've done is, is we've actually shown, so people can actually see how large these machines were. Yep. It actually turned, you know, like a monolithic column, 30 feet long, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. four feet in diameter. The, the lathe had to be huge, you know? So the stud uh, locations actually, people can view and actually see how big these machines really were. Yeah. 
as they were located in the mill. So that would represent where one machine was? Where sat? one machine was. That that was, a, that was. This was actually a small turning lathe oh, machine. A small one? A small one, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Take yeah. a look at the next one. Yeah. <clears throat> again, this was really fortunate. Again, came out of the uh, collection of Dave Hodgkins. Yeah. It was an actual piece of rail from the Quincy Quarry Railroad. Up there, we had about six miles of rail tracks to service that whole quarry area and it was called the Quincy Quarry Railroad. It was a specific railroad by investors in the city of Quincy that built up there. It was an actual rail of the Quincy Quarry Railroad, and it's actually, the rail actually, the railroad actually ran right through the center of the mill. You can see the large opening in there. And again, the railroad ran through the center of the mill so they could ship in granite from all over yeah. to be turned into, you know, cylindrical objects, columns. Yeah. So this is an actual site. We put it actually where the actual rail would have been okay. with this portion of rail that was actually saved. Yeah. So this is just another little new little artifact that we've actually you know, put right on the grounds as, as people walk around. It's kind of like a walking tour. Yes. You know? Plus, they get a little exercise walk. Yeah. yeah, well, there's that too. Yeah. But, I mean, it is, it's a nice level lot, so you, yeah. know, you don't have to yeah. be hiking any hills or no, anything. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's really fairly level. It's yeah. Not, and what you're, I mean, I think the neat thing that you're trying to do here is really kind of recreate exactly what existed there, you know, not just showing off a different artifact here, a different artifact there, but actually placing it where it would have been at the time. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what, what our intent was there, yeah, to, you know, place that rail right where it, right where the rail would have been. So you really can get a sense, yeah. you know, um, yeah. if you have just a little bit of an imagination yeah. of yeah. what that, and it must have been very loud. Had to be extremely loud in that in that building. Oh, it that, was. Yeah. It, it must have been. You know, no OSHA back then. No ear that's no earphones. Right. No earplugs. No exactly. safety glasses. No mask. <laughs> it was nothing like that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Unfortunately, our granite workers, you know, if you lived to be in your early fifties, that was really old. Is that right? Oh you know? yeah. 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 Take a look at the next one. Yeah, this is just another shot of uh, we had stone splitting. Again, we do stone splitting yes. several times a year, and again, we pre-drill the blocks. And we let the people actually put the feather and wedges in the hole and actually split the granite themselves. And this is a young lady with all her uh, feather and wedges in, and she actually hammering away, splitting the rocks. Yep. We have all the safety equipment, the glasses, the gloves if they want to wear them. Sure. And like I said, it's a big hit. It's a big hit with the woman, and it's a big hit with the kids. Oh, yeah. And the kids really love it. Look at what granite. I did. I just, you know, split a granite split block a granite in two, block, yeah. just using my own yeah. hands. Yeah. We have, uh, in fact, our stone splitting demonstration, we had about 30 people actually oh, that's split good. the granite. Yeah. Super. Yeah. yeah. I think we have one last one to show. Yeah. And Again, yeah. this was kind of interesting. <clears throat> our last open house, um, Pete Doherty uh, started the uh, Quincy Amateur Radio Club. And what they do is um, they ha do these special events, uh, special events. They go to special places. Like he, he he approaches, he says, "Can we can we come to the Quarry Museum and the and the Lions Training Mill and and we actually want to broadcast from there? And we call it a special events. And what they do is they broadcast there. And the, the theme was where's Quincy Granite. So they're broadcasting out throughout the world, yeah. shortwave. Where is Quincy Granite? They were looking for anybody to come back and say, gee, we got a building built of Quincy Granite. They made contact with uh, many places in Europe mm. uh, that day there. Really? In the West Coast. Uh, weather, I guess weather conditions were great, so they were really going to the, uh, they were going to the um, Europe and the West Coast. Okay. Didn't get anything better from South America or anything like that. Okay. But they logged in many, many stations that actually came back to them, Neat. you know, just to make contact with them. And then what they do is the club, I guess, they send a certificate to the radio club who logged in saying, yeah, we logged in to Quincy Mass. Uh, where is Quincy Granite? Okay. You know? So it was really interesting to have his group. They did it both um, shortwave and also Moss code. Hmm. They set up two stations, two antennas, uh, and they got many, many contacts throughout Europe and this country here. Wow. So uh, yeah, Peter did a great job, and uh, like, it was really interesting having him there. And uh, it, it was interesting for the people that come just to learn about granite, yeah. just to learn something about shortwave radio. Did you find any Quincy granite anywhere else in the world, <laughs> Al? Uh, we didn't, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he got a lot of... He got a lot of um, uh, responses from all, like oh. say, all from Europe and yeah. the West Coast. Oh, that's fun. You know? That's fun. Uh, we're running out of time, but I yep. wanted to remind folks about your Granite, granite Chips, chips yeah. newsletter, right? Granite Chips is always available to anybody. Just let us know. We'll send you a Granite Chips. Okay. 
And like say we have it up at the churning mill uh, in these uh, kiosk, the kiosks we have up there. Yes. Here. Yeah. So if anybody would like a copy, just let me know and we'll send them one. Okay. Always good to see you. I really appreciate the update. Joe, it's great to be with you, and it's always great to be here with QA TV. Likewise, too. Thank and you. I hope the weather will cooperate uh, tomorrow, but if not, uh, next the Saturday. The 28th. Okay. Yep. Either way. One more plug. We'll yep. be open the first weekend of November also. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Saturday and Sunday, the first weekend of November. Okay. It's not going to rain that weekend. It's not going to rain that okay. weekend. Okay. <laughs> Might snow, but hey, it's not going to rain. <laughs> I <laughs> hope it don't do either. <laughs> Thanks, Al. <laughs> Just out of time to check the forecast for you, speaking of the weather. Unfortunately, we do have rain on the way this afternoon. It'll be rather uh, showery throughout the evening as well. The weekend looks meh. Tomorrow's the wetter of the two for sure. A little better on Sunday, but the wind's going to pick up. And, of course, a nice day coming up on Monday. Thanks again to Albina for joining us from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here on the show, folks from NeighborWorks Housing Solutions in Quincy will be joining us. Meantime, go to our website anytime, qatv.org. All of our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at QA TV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.